Warzone gives players the chance to have nearly perfect aim. Whether it's having no recoil attachments, maybe changing a few settings, or just knowing in-game secrets. Well, in today's video, we are going to cover all of this. But to start off, let's first go over the settings. First setting you guys want to look into is Field of View. So when it comes to Battle Royale, Field of View is important for many different reasons. But it's especially important to minimize the visual recoil of your weapon. This is because when you have a higher Field of View, your optic will appear much smaller than what it actually is, overall reducing the visual recoil you see because you have a more zoomed out perspective. So I recommend changing this to anywhere between 100 and 120. Now the next one you want to look into is ADS field of view. So this is basically field of view, but it only takes place when you're aimed down sights. So for this setting, you want to change this to affected. Once again, it's going to make your iron sight smaller, making it that much easier to control your weapon because you're going to see less visual recoil. Lastly, on this tab, scroll down to motion blur and turn both settings off. And also you want to turn film grain to zero. This will help see enemy characters easily because the game will look more defined. Next up, we want to head over to the controller aiming tab and look into changing the horizontal and vertical sensitivity because this will affect how quick or how slow your regular and your aim down sight sensitivity is. At the end of the day, this is personal preference. I know people that play on five. I know people that play on 10, but I highly recommend settings between five and eight. So if you don't know what number to pick, start off at five, see how quick it is or how slow, and then move it up one notch until you find that sweet spot for you. Now scroll down to ADS sensitivity multiplier and change this to 0.8. At default, it is 1.0, which I feel is way too fast. When you take on long range gunfights, having a lower sensitivity will benefit you because it makes it easier to snap onto that aim assist bubble. As compared to having a faster sensitivity, you may overshoot your target completely and miss that aim assist bubble. And lastly, before we move on, you want to go down to aim response curve type and change this to dynamic. This will give you the ability to make your smaller micro adjustments in your aim, as well as making your crazy swings in your aim if you wanted to. It gives you more freedom when you're aiming as compared to standard. You're going to have like that slower startup if you want to make like a heavy swing. So you definitely want to change that to dynamic. And then as far as the aim assist type goes, I'm pretty sure everybody agreed that default is the standard one right now and the best one to go to. Now that we're done going over the settings, let's actually talk about a very important tip that a lot of people overlook, and that is going to be understanding the recoil pattern of your gun. So what you want to do is build out a gun, preferably a lower recoiling weapon like the SVA. If you don't have a build for it, just copy my build right here. But what you want to do is take it over to the firing range. And then from here, you want to stand against this barrier right here. And then look over here and just empty a complete mag against the wall. And then what you're going to start to notice is that every time you do this, you're going to see a pattern. They're never identical, but the shapes that they take are always similar. So with a gun like this, you see that it kicks up and then goes over to the left a little bit. So that just lets you know to make a mental note in your mind that whenever you're shooting anybody with this weapon, you want to make sure that you're holding the analog stick down a little bit as well as to the right. And then what's going to happen is that you're going to go from a straight line like that to hopefully like a smaller circle like this. So we are now at the point in the video where we can talk about shooting targets and taking advantage of aim assist. When it comes to Call of Duty, there are two different types of aim assist. The one that we all know about is the right analog aim assist. That's simply if you just hover over somebody, you get that slowdown effect. But now you also get aim assist in your left analog stick. So whenever you strafe across somebody, you see that my character is kind of like pivoting around them. So how you want to take advantage of this is by doing this. You want to aim down and then strafe as well as use your right analog stick to stay on target. This is going to make your aim look almost perfect. And another thing you can do if you're not able to completely strafe is to simply go left and right like this. By doing this, you're still getting the left analog aim assist as well as the right. So now when you combine everything I showed you in today's video, your aim should come out looking something like this. So once again, strafe left and right back and forth. Then you're going to be hitting almost 60% on three targets at two plates. But honestly, that is not everything. There is one trick going around that a lot of pro players utilize that they're not telling anybody. So we all know about stick drift by now. Most people hate it, but the pro players actually don't mind it. And that's because they move their dead zone to zero for the left and right stick. So by doing that, if you have a controller that has stick drift, as you see mine does on the right side, you see that it's constantly moving and I'm not touching it. So what did I tell you guys before about the right analog aim assist? If we're constantly moving around the map, our right analog stick is always going to feel pressure. So you're going to have the advantage in a lot of gunfights by already having your aim ready. And lastly, I wanted to go over my controller that I use and also my performance thumbsticks that I don't see a lot of people mentioning. So I do want to let you guys know up front, I am partnered by Cinch, the actual controller. 
you guys can get them from their website use code sean p if you would like that link will be down in the description but for the thumbsticks i am not partnered by them i don't make any money from this i'm just letting you guys know what works for me and what could also work for you for only about what 20 bucks so what they do is that they raise your analog stick height so with these thumbsticks you're able to make smaller more precise in-game movements with better comfort and control but then you also still have the freedom of making your more wilder turns and your wider swings and besides that the thumbsticks feel better they're more grippier than having a default xbox or playstation controller 